name is Kathleen Nichols and I'm delighted to welcome you back here to the Holy Land. This is the beginning of our pilgrimage called Exodus, a pilgrimage of freedom. And we are here in a place called Hebron. And I would like to mention behind me, you see a big building. It looks like a wall with a corner and you can see a, a minaret. That is actually both a mosque and a synagogue. And it's built on a hillside over some very important tombs, in fact. Right behind us are the tombs of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham's wife, Sarah, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, and Jacob's wife, Leah. This place is called the Tomb of the Patriarchs. In Hebrew, it's called Machpelah, which means double. It may be a double uh, chambered uh, tomb, or it simply might mean that you have both the patriarch and the matriarch, their wives, together in the same place. It has been here, this structure you see, for over 2,000 years. But underneath it, in the caves of this hillside, is one of the most important pieces of property that Abraham ever came across. And he brought it, he bought it to bury his wife when she died here in this area. So welcome to Hebron, and we'll talk a little bit more as we get closer about the significance of the patriarchs as we begin our pilgrimage of Exodus, our pilgrimage of freedom. These stones are huge, and if you look at them from the other side, they are actually carved with a frame. And if you're an archaeologist, you know immediately that that is an indication that this was built in the Herodian era. Herod himself actually wanted to build this place over the tombs of the patriarchs because he said it was extremely important. And so he had this building built. It's been here for 2,000 years. These stones have seen so much history, and they mark the spot where Abraham, right here in front of us, was buried and with Sarah right next to him. Actually, he was buried in front of Sarah, who came here first. But these are ancient ancient walls. So you can imagine in this place, in this very place in Hebron, all of these people are coming up from Egypt and there's this huge ceremony, um, all of this a funerary, uh, not just a procession, but celebration because it was the father of the great administrator of Egypt, Joseph, who had passed away. And after they buried Isaac, or excuse me, after they buried Jacob here, Joseph went back down to Egypt. And after that is when the people multiplied and they multiplied so much uh, that they became a very important part of Egypt. And the Pharaoh who came after the Pharaoh who knew Joseph enslaved them. And that's how they became slaves and eventually were freed thanks to Moses. So that's our order. Remember, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and hundreds of years after Joseph came Moses. And so it was through him that the Lord said, out of Egypt, I will call my son. I will set my people through, free through him. That's why we're here. So 
So as you can tell right behind me is the direction of the mosque, well the mihrab, which points toward Mecca. So this is very clearly the mosque area of this place. Right behind us is the synagogue area. So the Jewish people play, pray on one side of Abraham's tomb and then Muslims pray over here. So it's just very interesting to see how there is in between the two of them, the patriarchs that we all share. We've come down from the caves of Machpel and I've taken a few steps away from the ancient oak tree here in this monastery property to place myself under this oak tree because it helps me to imagine where Abraham and Sarah were camping when those three people came and visited them. The three angels which we Christians now see as sort of a prefigurement of the Trinity who is visiting Abraham and Sarah and reminding them that God never forgets his promises. And so I think it's important if we're talking about an exodus pilgrimage to not confuse the patriarchs in our own minds. And so let's go through these early fathers of our faith, the patriarchs and matriarchs of our faith, so that we can have clear who they are and how on earth they ended up in Egypt and when they left Egypt, why they came back to this land. So a patriarch is any biblical figure regarded as the father of the human race. And so the matriarch then would be the older powerful woman in that family. And so the age of the patriarchs, the heir of the patriarchs is in the middle bronze age, two millennium before Christ. We know that the first one, Father Abraham, father uh, called by the Jews and the Christians and the Muslims, a semi-nomad, who enters the scene in Genesis 11 well after Noah, after the chaos at the Tower of Babel. And he comes through this tragic events, you know, the fall of mankind and this broken relationship with the Lord. And in Genesis 22, uh, it says, in you, all the families and nations of the earth will be blessed through you and your seed. So he comes to unite the entire human race. And it's because he believed God's promises. He made a covenant with the Lord that has two parts, which are key. One concerning his son, and the second concerning the land they would inherit. And that is why the land is called the promised land, all the way back to the patriarch Abraham. And so the beginning of God's people was established. Thanks to the matriarch Sarah, uh, who was aging and barren, but would receive the son because of God's supernatural work in her. Now Abraham had another son through Sarah's slave girl, Hagar, who was actually an Egyptian slave, when they were in Egypt, um, he probably she probably came into the family and started working for Sarah, and she gave birth to Ishmael. But that was when Abraham took matters into his own hands, and she and uh, Ishmael, who became the father of the Arab peoples, were, were sent out because of the way Ishmael was interacting with Isaac. So Isaac then is our second patriarch, born in Abraham and Sarah's old age and confirmed in his faith because, I mean, he was almost sacrificed on Mount Moriah. He saw the Lord provide that ram in his place. And so they continued to grow. When Isaac had a son, that would be the third patriarch, Jacob. Jacob, who then becomes uh, Israel. So Jacob is Isaac's son. He is a man of trickery and, and divisiveness, of course, but he's also a man of faith. Um, he's the one who was born from the matriarch Rebecca, who was his mother, Isaac's wife. And he wrestled the angel of God through the night and saw that uh, ladder, Jacob's ladder, you know, the angels going up and down into heaven. So God's promise to make a nation became even closer to fulfillment when Jacob became the father of 12 sons. One of those sons, the second youngest from the matriarch Rachel, became the very powerful Joseph in Egypt. And as we know, eventually all 12 of Jacob's sons, of Israel's sons, whose families would become the 12 tribes of Israel, ended up in Egypt due to a famine. So when Joseph was there and they came down, they grew and they multiplied and they were blessed. And then in the year, around the year 1400 BC, they were enslaved and they would need God to deliver them from their bitter life of slavery.
So from here in Hebron, in the part of Mamre, we can't help but think what a blessed place this is. But there's some key questions that need to raise up in our hearts as we begin this pilgrimage. But especially when we think about the fact that these patriarchs, these are my fathers, my fathers in faith, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're all here. Sarah, Rebecca, they're all here. They came before me and they are part of my family. And what happened after Joseph was in Egypt, who also you know, was buried and then eventually his bones were brought back here to the Holy Land, what does this have to do with me? Well, it's part of my history, it's part of my story. Now, if they made it to Egypt, not only to survive, but then eventually to be enslaved and then to be freed, it's where we can't help but ask ourselves, how did I get there? How did I get into a situation of being enslaved? What enslaves me? What keeps me from being free? And then we can also say, what is the journey that I have to make? Together, we're gonna to be able to make this journey in the most amazing places in the Holy Land, which is not just a modern day Israel. It includes Egypt, it includes Sinai, which is part of Egypt and Jordan. We're gonna be going through all of those areas. And it's going to be an analogy that speaks to my soul, that speaks to how I am and what I'm called to be doing during this Lent. So again, I want to invite each one of you to follow me to the different places here about the history, the history, because when we're making it in this Exodus, we're actually taking a route, which is the traditional route of the Exodus. That's when the ancient Israelites were coming, the Hebrews, right, coming from Goshen, which is the northernmost part of the Nile, and running, running, running as fast as they could uh, during the Passover to get to, uh, just to get away, just to get away, until they make it to the Red Sea and then they see Pharaoh and his armies coming behind them. Okay, so we're taking that route. From Goshen, he's coming from the part where the, the Pharaoh would have lived, and boom, they meet right at the Red Sea. We're gonna be crossing right south of the Suez Canal, which is the traditional crossing spot where there's two little peninsula which come. We'll be making our way to the coast of Moses, where we're gonna be seeing physically actually seeing the wells, the palm trees that are spoken about in Exodus. From there, we're making our way down to Mount Sinai. Don't forget that Sinai actually means, I think it means name, because it changes from the name of Mount Horeb to Mount Sinai. And it's because of that. It's where he first heard the Lord call him, call his name and reveal his name. And then from Sinai, the Monastery of St. Catharines will be going back up to Kadesh Barnea, which is right in the current southern border of um, Israel and the Sinai Peninsula, sending in the spies, whatever, we're gonna be going through that whole desert area where they come back and wander around going up through then the deserts of the um, southern part of Jordan and then to Mount Nebo and to the, uh, to the Jordan River. So this is all an analogy of what's happening in my own life. So see that, see that. I know that there's another route that people are talking about that perhaps they crossed on the other, you know, part of the Red Sea into Saudi Arabia, it could be, but we're taking the traditional path, which is a very powerful place. So once you've seen it, and once you've heard about the reflections of the 10 Commandments, the idea is to reflect on that content and apply it to myself. Take it to the one on the mountain. Take that with you and go up in prayer. This is our invitation on this virtual pilgrimage of freedom. So what we'll be using in terms of books, you'll be using Exodus, we'll be using Exodus constantly, especially around Exodus 20, where it's talking about the 10 commandments. We're making constant reference to the gospel of Matthew, especially chapter five on the Mount of Beatitudes. And for those of you who would like, you can also follow along our reflections in the third part of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the part about the moral life, how we live this life of the Lord within us. But again, there's parallels of what they lived in my own life. And so this is a covenant that we want to enter into. So all of our patriarchs, what they did, what they chose to do, affected us and we're part of that genealogy. What we do and what we choose to do during this Lent has an effect in generations to come, not only in my own life, but just like my fathers in the faith, I am called to be a father or a mother in the faith. 
and the Lord wants me to come out of Egypt. He's calling me, come out of Egypt, my son, come out of Egypt, my daughter, enter into the promised land. So let's take this journey of Exodus together and become part of that lineage of salvation history. Let's begin our Exodus to hear him calling me, revealing his name to me, going out of Egypt, out of slavery, out of sin, out of habits, bad habits, out of vice, and entering into the glorifying, purifying desert and the promised land, which we know very well is heaven. So I'm excited to uh, to walk this with walk this way with you, and we will see you tomorrow on Ash Wednesday as we take our first steps of Exodus. God bless you, and know that we are praying for you from the Holy Land.